so I'm going to show you some sort of the essentials of um, working with audio. And to be honest, I, I'm actually a really good sound editor, but I'm not a mixer. And the difference is that I work really hard to make my levels good and to create all of the cross crosses between audio. You know, I want to hear a little bit of the wind come in before we see the shot of the windy day. That's one of the things you should think about is that uh, if you watch films, you'll see often the audio is leading you in uh, in a kind of subtle way to what the next picture will be. You start to hear a car rev, and then you see the car leaving the driveway, whatever it is. And the thing that was happening before might fade out. So there's a lot of that to do, which you can do really, really well on your own. But if you have something with some crazy high-pitched noise or whatever the problem might be, you might need to either watch another tutorial that's really a lot about sound editing um, or mixing, you know, audio repair work, let's say, um, or you might want to hire a mixer. Um, so uh, we're going to just teach you the essential things to make something so that as you're watching the film, you're showing it to somebody else, it's not, somebody's talking really loud and then somebody's talking really slow. You know, that won't make for a good experience for them. So you want to make everything clean, level, and have nice fade-ins and fade-outs of your audio. So let's say we have this combination. We have the wide shot. Pasta ingredients. And Pasta ingredients. Pasta. And there's a little bit of a fan running in the first shot and not so much in the second. So I kind of want to make that a smooth transition. So the first thing I'm going to do is find where she starts saying pasta, and I'm going to mark that, and then I'm going to do the same thing in the second shot. P, 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 P. Whoop, didn't select that, and I made it a pen tool, sorry. Um, and I'm going to mark that. So now I know that that's sort of where they overlap. And I'm going to drag this back. So those two markers butt in. And I could play it for a moment just to see. Pasta. Pretty good, huh? OK. So now I might want to take the first track and extend it a little bit. So I'm going to use the Option key so I can extend it. And because I see the waveforms, looks like she says the second thing a little sooner on that first track than the other track. But I feel like I've got. Pasta. Those pretty well lined up. And in this case, it's not about the wind coming in and the car going out. It's just getting these two things to sound OK with each other. So at the beginning of the clip, it's just like with the picture. You see volume, et cetera. So we'll go, volume would be level. And we do the same thing on the second one, level. And then we'd get us back to here. And we don't really need very much of that second one, because this is. Pasta. So maybe we're going to, we know we're going to fade out at about there. So I'm going to option and move this over a little bit, just get rid of that second word. And we might want to, well, let's see. If we're going to cut, maybe we're going to cut there. So I'm going to also just get my cut going in the right place. And then I'm going to play it, and I'm going to watch the audio meters. I would say that's pretty good. It's hovering around negative 12. And what's the second one doing? Bacon, eggs, pepper. That sounds pretty good, too. So I don't have a big discrepancy in these two tracks. So all I want to do is use the pen tool and make a couple of points to fade down.
And on the second one, which I'm going to expand, I'm going to make a couple of points to fade in. I think that first one might be not good, so we'll see how it sounds. Make six pasta, bacon, pasta, bacon. So really what's happening though here is that I am hearing her say that twice and I don't want that. So I think I'm just going to bring this down and keep the rest of it up. And I might want a little more of the fan to ease me in. Pasta, bacon. Okay, I'm going to make this a little longer. Oh no, she's already starting to say that. So, oops, and I didn't do that. So let me undo that and do option and just drag this back. And I would say what you just watched was the principle of it, but it was a really stupid example because I have the person saying the same word twice, and that's usually not what I would want. So I'm going to save this as an example of a really stupid example, and then I'm going to create a different one, which makes more sense. Okay. So because I use the FX to set volume, you're seeing this white line, which is telling you what the volume is. And I'm going to bring it up. I'm just going to click and drag it up slightly. It'll give you the dB, but I don't know numerically what makes it louder. I just do it by listening and by looking at my audio meter. Not too much water because I want it to, you know, there to be a lot of gluten in there. That the might be okay. I might bring it down a teeny bit, but I'm not going to worry it too much. Whoops. Okay, we'll just leave it at seven. Then the other one. I'm going to cut up my bacon, which is. Seems okay. Okay. So now what we want is for, make it a little bigger, for the fan noise to fade out. And I don't know how much there is, so I'm going to use the option key and extend it. So, okay, that's good. I've got some nice amount of fan noise until something else happens. So let's say I'm going to use that much of it. And I'm not necessarily going to wait until the cut. I'm going to start fading before the cut. So I'm going to use the pen tool and I'm going to put in a number of cuts. Sometimes you only need one or two and sometimes you need a bunch. It depends on how gradually you want to fade. And in the other one, I wonder, maybe I want a little bit more here, so I'm just going to look for a minute and see how much sound I have. Ah, she's talking, so let me just go to there, and I might not even need to fade up. It depends on how noisy the top one is, so let's just listen. Um, while the water is boiling, I'm gonna it seems, this one seems a little low, right? So I'm going to bring it up slightly and see again how it is. Um, while the water is boiling. Still feels a little distant compared to the other one. So let me bring it up that much. Um, while the water is boiling. A couple of shakes of salt. And I think it still needs a little more. So I keep saying let's see, but what I should say is let's hear, because what you're doing when you're sound editing is you're wearing headphones so that you don't hear the cars and the kids crying and the cats screaming and anything else. You're only hearing your audio, right? So you want to wear headphones when you're sound editing. Um, while the water is boiling, I'm going to cut up my Now that's thing. gotten a little hot. You see how it's going into the red? So I would bring it down slightly. But basically, that's what you're doing, is you're very carefully and slowly making all, all the decisions about how much this one should fade out and how much this one should fade in. And you just do that with every single clip until everything is at negative 12, unless somebody screams and then it goes up into the red, that's fine, and then it goes back down to negative 12. And you make sure you don't have what I always call, I hate to say this, but if I ever watch a film and the cuts from one clip to another 
are completely different in their audio. It's just like, eh, but, eh, you know, I say, that's a student film. Because the problem is, it takes a lot of time to make a film, and suddenly it's due next week. And so you don't make the time to do sound editing. And so it becomes really obvious that you didn't do sound editing because it's just blunt cuts. We can deal with blunt cuts of picture. We can't deal with blunt cuts of sound. We just don't, that doesn't work. It just means I'm in this space, I'm in this space, I'm in this space, I'm in this space. And you don't want people to be doing that. You want them to be moving through visually, but also with your sound. And so it's really worth doing this. Thank you for watching this. I hope it's useful. Share it with anybody you want. I want to thank Princeton University for supporting me doing this because I did it in this beautiful studio. And Dan Kearns is the engineer for the University Broadcast Center. So he set it all up and he did a fantastic job and I want to thank him. So have a good time editing.